Uh, in this video, I will show you how I scan and edit my film negatives. For this, I use a plugin I made for Affinity Photo called Signance Film Inversion. This video has a table of contents, which you can see here, so you can navigate to the sections that are relevant to you. This plugin is intended to allow you to edit your raw film negative scans while taking advantage of an infrared scan that most scanners are capable of doing to remove any dust or scratches on the film. It is intended for deliberate editing of each image as you invert them. This lets you speed up your scanning process, which means you can take more time for your editing process later. Let's go over what you need. First of all, you need a film scanner and the required accessories. I, for example, use a dust blower and some white cotton gloves uh, to minimize dust and fingerprints that show up on a film. You need software to scan your film negatives, such as Silverfast. To use my plugin, you also need Affinity Photo, and this is also what we will be using to edit the pictures. However, in a later section of this video, I will be explaining exactly how the plugin works. So even if you're using a different software from Affinity Photo, you should be able to use another software to achieve similar results. Affinity Photo is excellent image editing software similar to Photoshop or GIMP. However, it's a one-time purchase and usually only costs about $30 when it's on sale, which is pretty frequently. I can highly recommend it. You can download my plugin for free on my GitHub, which is linked below. You need to install my plugin to Affinity Photo, and if you are going to take advantage of the infrared scan for dust and scratch removal, you also want, might want to install my workflow, which is also on my GitHub. This workflow is only for macOS, so if you're using another operating system, see this later section of the video on workarounds for other operating systems. All right, let's get into how to scan the film negatives. Make sure you remove all the dust you can and prepare the film for the scanner. then load the film into your scanner. On our computer, we can open up Silverfast and we can make sure our scanner is selected and start. Now we can pre-scan our image that we've loaded in and wait for it to load. There we go. Let's ro rotate it so it's in a proper orientation and then we can grab these red bars here to make sure that only the film is selected. There we go. Now we want to make sure that we've got 64-bit HDR RAW selected right here in the format. The HDRI indicates that we will also be scanning the infrared scan, which is what we will be needing to remove any of the dust or scratches. If you want to know what the infrared scan even means and how it is used for dust and scratch removal, I will be explaining that later in the video. Then we can select a name that we want the file to be saved as and we can select the path of where it should be saved. So let's navigate to the correct folder and select it. Then you can select the format of the resolution you want and the photo quality as well as the scanning resolution. These are the presets that I found to work best with my scanner, but it also depends from scanner to scanner, depending on which one you have. Now don't be confused by the fact that we are already seeing an inverted image right here. Silverfast automatically inverts the image for the quick previews, but the output file will still be a raw color negative like we selected right here. These settings right here are not very important. Negafix is just for the preview right here. Uh, it won't be used. Uh, when we are scanning in RAW, so we can safely ignore the, all these settings. Once we're ready to scan, we can just select Scan. Now we can see that our scan is almost done. It's just processing the last moments, and then after saving it, we are finished. Now let's go over how to process the RAW scans. When you download the latest release from my GitHub, you get a folder called Signance Film Inversion version 2.0. You can open this folder, and then we have two files in here. The first one is the Affinity Photo Macro, or plugin, and we can simply install it by double-clicking it. And we also have the workflow right here that will let us split TIFFs if you are using the infrared scan. We can also just install that by double-clicking it and hitting install. Each scan outputs to one TIFF file, which contains the pure scan and infrared scan. 
we need to split this file into these two separate files. We can do this by right clicking, hovering over quick actions, and then selecting split TIFF. We receive two output files, one ending with AAA, which is the regular scan, and one ending with AAB, which is the infrared scan. Again, if you're not using macOS, see this later section on workarounds for other operating systems. Now we can open the regular scan in Affinity Photo by right clicking and opening with Affinity Photo. And we can drag the infrared scan on top of it. There we go. Don't worry about it being placed offset, that will be fixed by the plugin. If you don't see a window here called library with your macros in it, you can show it by clicking view, going to studio and selecting library. Then since we installed our plugin, we've got Signance Film and Version version 2 showing up here and our two macros that we can select. The bottom one is if you're doing a scan without infrared, you can just pull in the regular scan and select this plugin and it will do everything. But since I, I'm showing the version with the infrared scan, we'll select this top one, Signance Fulman version with IR. We just have to select it and then wait for it to load. And there we go. Now we get two versions of the base image, one original version that is called No Dust Removed and the dust remove version, which is on top. And that lets you, lets you quickly compare how well the dust removal worked. As we can see, there was some specks of dust, for example, over here that was removed. In the case that the dust removal worked well, like in this image, for example, but it messed up certain highlights, like down here, this little part of the image was not actually dust, but it got falsely recognized. We can fix this by making sure we're on the dust remove layer and selecting the eraser. Let's adjust the size. And then we can just erase this part of the layer and we fix the highlight, but we keep all of the other dust removal that worked well. Now we can edit this image. To make this process easier, some of the adjustments I most frequently use are already here. Of course, you can go ahead and add any other adjustments you want and go crazy. Let's finish editing this image together. I'm going to change some of the white balance to make the image look a little bit more, more neutral to me. I think there's also a little bit too much of magenta. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Um, let's go to hue saturation luminance and um, maybe boost the saturation a little bit more. I think that looks nice. Um, let's go to selective color and maybe adjust the sky a little bit. So we'll go to blues and let's boost the cyan a little bit. That looks about right. And I think I'll take some of the magenta out of the sky as well. That looks pretty nice. I think I'll finish off by going to split toning and boosting some of the shadow saturation of the shadow you've got selected right here to make the shadows a little bit more blue and neutral and less magenta for some nice contrast with the highlights. That looks good. And finally, I think I will add um, a LUT to this image. I'll go to adjustments and select LUT and I think I will go with a teal and orange LUT and we can turn this down a bit so it's not as extreme. There we go, I think that's a pretty nice look. Let's look at a before and after. It's very subtle but it enhances the, the nice contrast with the blues and the oranges that we're getting in this image. There we go. I think I'm pretty happy with how this image turned out now. And once we're done editing the image we can go ahead and export it. So let's go to File, Export, and we can save it into, in the format of our choice. I usually save in JPEG at the setting high quality and we can export it. Additionally, we can save the Affinity Photo file 
in the case that we want to make any adjustments later and then we still have the full overview of everything that we've changed in the image. Now I'll go into the explanation of how the plugin works. First, let me give a quick explanation on the TIFF files we get as an output. TIFFs can contain multiple layers and the output we get from Silverfast contains both the regular scan and the infrared scan, both in one TIFF file saved as individual layers. The workflow I provided is a simple one that simply splits a TIFF with multiple layers into individual TIFF files. This uses the Unix command TIFF split, which is built into macOS. The workflow simply takes the selected file and applies the TIFF split command to it. This means that if you're a Linux user or are running anything Unix based, you probably already have access to this command from the get go. If you're on Windows, you can use the well known image manipulation command line tool ImageMagic. For details on how to use it, see its documentation or check out this super user thread for the relevant issue uh, that is also linked in the description. Now onto the plugin itself. The best way to explain how the plugin works is to go through and do all the steps that the plugin does automatically, manually, and explain as we go. Let's once again open first the original version, or the regular version, and then let's drag in the infrared scan. And we'll start out by aligning both images so they're on top of each other, because when you drag in an image in Affinity Photo, this gets dragged to wherever your mouse is. So let's hit V so that we can move it and we can just go and align it. We can center align it vertically and horizontally. And hit apply. There we go. So now both images are on top of each other. We can select both of them and group them together. And we can call these originals. And then we can duplicate a version that we can call inverted. This way we have the original files in the same document if for whatever reason we want to take a look at them or start over. Now we will do some preparation for the dust and scratch removal. Most film scanners are also capable of scanning in the infrared spectrum of light specifically to be able to remove dust and scratches. The reason infrared is used is because most film negative emulsions are transparent to infrared light, while dust and scratches scatter the infrared light. This means, in theory, that if you scan with infrared, you get a blank white image because the infrared passes through the film emulsion and we only get dark spots wherever dust or scratches were present. In practice, we still get some of the image bleeding through into the final infrared scan, but we can use some clever tricks to try to minimize this image and only end up with the dust and scratches visible. Then we can use image manipulation to reconstruct those parts of the image that were obscured by scratches or dust. Here in the infrared scan, we can see this pretty clearly. We see some of the dust right here that we would like to remove from the image, but we can also see some of the image that we don't want to remove. To remove some of the image that is bleeding through, we will go to the regular image and we will go to channels. And here we can see all of the channels, the red, the green, and the blue channel that constitute this scan. We will go to the red channel and we will create a grayscale layer from it. The image that is still bleeding through in the infrared scan consists mainly of the red spectrum of light, which makes sense since these wavelengths are adjacent to each other. This means we can try to use the red channel of the regular scan to try to filter out any parts of the infrared scan that are not dust or scratches. We will pull this grayscale layer up on top above the infrared scan and we can rename it red channel and we can rename the infrared scan to IR just to keep an overview and let's uh, group these just for organization's sake. And let's call these IR2. All right, let's quickly hide the red channel for a second and we'll select the infrared channel and we will go to filters, colors and hit auto levels. This greatly improves the contrast and uh, we can see that the dust particles or the dust that we can see is now basically pure black, which improves the selection that we can make of it. Let's go back to the red channel. We can make it visible again. And let's set the blend mode to divide. Now we can see that we basically just have a bunch of the dust particles selected. We still have some noise coming through from the image, but we will be able to deselect most of that later as 
most of it is very, very small and just one pixel large. Let's select layer and merge visible. So we have uh, this, these two subtractions from each other as a proper layer now. It looks like some new stuff showed up, but that's just uh, the rendering of Affinity Photo. If we zoom in, we can tell that it's basically the same. We can rename this merged layer to dust because that's pretty much everything that's selected there. Now we can hide the infrared group and we'll start working on the regular scan. We'll select a regular scan and create a new group that we'll call color. And uh, first of all, we'll add an invert adjustment just so we can see what we're doing here. So let's uh, select the, ba the background again or the regular scan and we'll go to filters, colors and do auto levels again. There we go, it's already looking a lot better. Let's do another levels adjustment by adding the uh, levels adjustment right here. And we're going to modify the gamma to be 0.45. Now we have the correct brightness and darkness for this image. Now after doing these two major adjustments, we're going to add them to this layer by going to arrange and move inside. We'll do the same thing with the invert adjustment. And then we can go ahead and flatten this layer by going, selecting it and hitting rasterize. Now let's take this and do some auto white balance and some auto contrast. Now let's take this layer and call it no dust removed because we'll be keeping this as the bottom layer. And then let's duplicate it and call this top version dust removed because we'll be using this version combined with the infrared scan to remove the dust. We can select the dust layer again and now assuming that like when you open a default new affinity photo file you've got white selected we can show this and select sampled color. This selects everything that's white in the image. As you can see right here all of the white area has been selected and we can hit apply and then we'll just uh, invert the selection so that only the dark areas or the uh, things that are not white are being selected invert pixel selection right here that way only the areas that are not white are being selected now to remove all of this noise that is coming through from the image that we don't want to be recognized as dust or scratches we're going to select and grow or shrink the selection. We're going to shrink the selection by one pixel. And that way, all of the larger areas that have been recognized are still selected, but all of this noise right here is not in the selection anymore. We want to make sure that the entire dust particles are in the selection though. So now once we've filtered out all these one pixel sized dark spots, we're gonna grow the selection again, this time by four pixels. And make sure that you select circular. Then we can hit apply. And now we can see that all of the dust particles have been completely contained within the selection. We can hide infrared layers again and select the dust removed layer. And now we also have a nice preview of everything that's going to be selected as dust. So we've got some dust right here, right here, and they're all being beautifully circled by the selection that we've made. But now let's actually remove the dust because we don't want it to show up anymore. And we're going to do that by going to edit in paint. And once it's finished loading, we can go into these areas and we can see that the dust seems to have magically been removed. We can clear our selection and then we can take a look at the difference that we've made. So let's zoom in again and see all the dust that was there beforehand but is now gone in the dust removed version. If there have been any spots that have been missed, let's say this is a dust particle that's been missed, we can do some manual inpainting by going to the healing brush right here and making sure we select inpaint brush tool and let's make it a little bit smaller and then we can 
touch up this spot right here by drawing over it, and there we go. It's been in-painted as well. And now we're done. We've done all of the steps that the plugin does automatically, which should be a useful resource for anyone wanting to learn more about this process. I hope this video has been able to help you learn something about the film scanning and editing process. If you have any questions, just leave them below in the comments. And if you have any technical problems, just leave an issue on my GitHub. Have fun editing, and I'll see you next time.